Hey, what's up? My name is Neil Parfit and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about wrangling the human voice, aka me. And to do this, I'm going to demonstrate this with an ART voice channel, which is a microphone preamp with a whole bunch of other goodies on it. That's what a voice channel is, or you might see products called a vocal strip, etc, etc. It's a microphone preamp with additional tools that can help sculpt the spoken or sung word. And we'll just go through that today. I'll, I'll show you what these different blocks do, and you'll hear how it affects my voice directly. I was looking at this, or an option like this, because I've decided to get out of 500 series, which are little modules with dedicated tasks. I just felt in the studio, I already have one illness, which is the Eurorack modular, the massive synth behind me. 500 series is another thing into itself. And I was just like, you know what? There's too many things in here. I should just sell all those and get one dedicated thing. And so far I have rented this for the month just to see how it goes. And it's actually quite affordable. It's under $600 Canadian and it does all the things. And it's not like I'm a beautiful singer or something like that. So am I wasting one of my preamps that are $3,000 more to somehow tackle this. I don't think it's really worth it. And I think the results are in the pudding and here we are. Let's take a listen and hear how this has hopefully enhanced my voice. You'll just have to let me know. First and foremost, the microphone I'm using is a Lewitt, which I'd never heard of before. LCT 240 Pro, about $130 Canadian. So there's not a Neumann U87 hanging over me right now. It's just wasted on my voice, to be honest. I'd rather have that out on the recording floor so I can record real musicians with it while not having to constantly put up and take down a microphone in my camera position. So I thought this was a good combo to test out, and here we are. First and foremost, you have the preamp section. That's what is adding gain to your mic to eventually bring the signal level up to a line level, which is what most audio interfaces understand. They will offer power to power condenser microphones, which is 48 volts. You'll see that called phantom power on various devices. And then on this, we have some different processing blocks. And the two most important ones are compression, which is controlling your dynamics, and an equalizer, which is controlling your tone. So I'm going to turn off all the stuff, and then we're going to hear what I sound like. And then I'm going to introduce them all in, and you'll hear how much of a difference it all makes. So give me a second, and I will just disengage all this stuff. Okay, so this is what I sound like without any of the things on me. No magic sprinkles whatsoever. And just so you know, the microphone is about 20 inches away from me. So it's not right up against my face. So we have to do a little bit more work because my sound of my voice is just dispersing a little bit more into the room. But you'll notice right away, my voice is more nasal. It's a little bit noisier in here. It's kind of brittle, not very great. The loudness is kind of erratic. If I suddenly talk louder, like I jump up, like it's not controlled in any way. So there's a few things we have to do first and foremost when we're processing a voice. Number one, you will see a low cut on most mic preamps. And it's basically a high pass filter. It's only allowing frequencies above a certain point to pass. We're eliminating subsonics and rumble. So that could be anything from just vibrations in the room that we can barely feel. It could be me bumping my desk or hitting the mic or the shock mount, or if the shock mount isn't doing a good job, it's kind of helping us eliminate some of that really energetic bass energy. So I'm going to do that now. And you'll notice it's not going to sound that much difference, but the difference is a lot of those low frequencies will be eliminated. This is really important for the next step because our next step is a compressor and bass energy can really change the characteristics of how a compressor behaves because it's such big energy. So we want to eliminate that stuff. So what is an audio compressor? This isn't like compressing a WAV file down to an MP3 or uh, a ProRes down to an MP4 or something like that. It's not a data rate thing. This is a dynamic issue. It's taming 
the maximum loudness of a signal. And if we use this screen as an example, if the lowest part of the screen is pure silence and the topmost part of the screen is the maximum signal you could ever take before you digitally clip, this is how I can kind of demonstrate how compression works. So the idea with compression is you set a threshold of where it's going to start to work. And for a dialogue, it's sort of around the average of where your dialogue level is. And anything that crosses that threshold above will be processed and manipulated. So an example is, let's say our threshold is right here. You may have noticed on a compressor, if you've never used one before, it will have a ratio setting like one to one, two to one, three to one, five to one, 20 to one. And you might be like, well, what does that actually do? And the answer is this setting is gonna tell us how our compressor is gonna react once the threshold is crossed. So let's say our threshold is right here and you're on a one-to-one -one ratio and your signal ends up being this loud. If it's a one-to-one -one ratio, anything above this threshold will be at the exact same level. If your ratio is set to two-to-one, if your original signal is this loud, it's gonna be turned down to half, two-to-one. If your compressor is set to three to one, you're going down to like two thirds. Four to one, you're going to a quarter, so on and so on. The higher the ratio you get, the closer to the threshold it gets. And eventually the signal is just limited. It can't get any higher than that. And that's exactly what a limiter is versus a compressor. It's not going any higher than that whatsoever and it's clamped down. And that can sound really weird on the spoken word, Whereas a more gentle ratio of three to one sounds a little bit more natural. You're not completely eliminating all the dynamics. So let's take a listen. So right now we're at a one to one ratio. Take a listen to what happens when we're near a three to one ratio. Check, one, two, check. Hello, how's it going? You can see that this gain reduction meter is pulling back and that means it's turning me down the louder I talk. And you've probably noticed that the level of my voice has dropped a little bit because the dynamics are being smooshed. So if I suddenly talk really loud, you probably notice that the compressor's gain reduction really pulled back there. Now, because I've turned down the level of my voice, so now my voice is kind of contained around here, I can actually now just turn this up because there's no risk of clipping now. So that's what makeup gain is, and that's why we have this output level control on the end. So if I turn this up, now our signal's back to where it needs to be. But because we've taken this signal and bumped it up like this, our noise down here has also been turned up. So now when I'm not talking, you'll probably notice that there's way more noise in the signal. And this is stuff I can barely hear in the room, but because we've turned up the gain, we're hearing it more. And that's stuff I don't want. Like that's the sound of the computer and my UPS and like various things in the distance. But we have another tool to be able to help us out here. And that's what a noise gate is. Just like a compressor, we can set a threshold of where it will start to react. And once we pass that threshold, it will close the gate. So as an example, right now our threshold is off. If I turn up the threshold just beyond where our room noise is, you'll see a little light turn on and the gate's engaged. The door has closed on our noise. So take a listen to this. You notice that light turned on there? And when I'm not talking, we're not hearing the noise, right? The only problem with a gate, especially on this unit anyway, because we don't have any extended settings for it, is that it can get a little bit choppy sounding, especially on quieter elements like my breathing. <gasps> so luckily we have an alternate mode called a downward expander. And instead of the gate turning on and off instantly, you can think of it as a fast moving closing door instead of an instant close. So take a listen to this. So now the downward expander is working and it sounds way more natural when I stop talking. Now it just goes to natural silence 
which actually is an artificial silence. And our dialogue is wrangled now to a degree. The only problem now is the tone of my voice might not be correct based on the characteristics of my voice versus this microphone and just how the room sounds, etc., etc. On this one, as an example, we have a high shelf and a low shelf. You could think of those as the bass and treble tilts on a stereo system. And then in the middle, we have two sweepable mids, which means we can pick any frequency we want and boost or cut those frequencies. And by trial and error, we can find something that works with my voice. So I've dialed in something rough here to hopefully wrangle this beautiful, pure voice to sound better on YouTube or whatever. And what do you think of this? So now my tone controls are engaged. I have more bass. I've taken out some honker and maybe I sound better. I mean, this is always subjective, right? But I feel like with these settings, we've taken out the noise, we've tamed my dynamics, and now we have a sort of broadcast style dialogue. And these kind of processors are the staple of how voices are processed for the radio. The one tool on here I didn't really mention is the de and that really tames sibilance. My voice isn't that bad when it comes to the S's, whereas some people, that sound can just pierce right through and poke you in the eardrum. Like, it's really intense. So the idea with a de is that it listens for those specific S frequencies and just turns them down a little bit. And with all that in mind, your end result should be a nice, clean spoken word. And here we are, I hope. So let me know what you think of this. Do I sound better? Do I sound worse? There are vocal strips that cost way more than this in magnitudes of thousands of dollars. I remember 24 years ago, Focusrite made these really amazing um, session and producer packs that were awesome. Way more fully featured, but thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for those things. And for what this is, for under 600 Canadian, this is actually kind of impressive. So just as a quick rundown, it's a two preamplifier with lower high voltage. So you can either get saturation or it can be clean. We got the phantom power, the low cut. We got the compressor section. We got a de -esser. We got a gate slash downward expander mode. We have tone controls, two fixed bands and two sweepable bands. Then we got makeup gain. There's also a full complement of metering. We got the gain reduction. We got an indicator for a gate being on or off. There is a VU meter for average loudness. There's a, a peak meter right here with, it looks like a one second peak hold so we can see how our signal's doing. And then the part I'm not using on this is it also has a built-in AD converter so you can use it via USB. It also has Toslink SPDIF output mode or you can set it to Toslink ADAT output mode. It also has AES on XLR outputs, and it also has work clock in and out. Like, I don't know how they fit all this in here for the money. Maybe this is a loss leader product for something else, but really fully featured for the cost. This thing doesn't feel like a plastic piece of crap. It's like a hunk of metal. The knobs feel good. The buttons feel good. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. It doesn't feel like a hunk of junk. And I don't think it sounds like that either. I mean, it doesn't sound like my Aurora audio preamp, but that preamp is also $3,000 more, so I wouldn't expect it to. You know, it's not comparing apples to apples. But for the money, this thing sounds really good. And this isn't an endorsement kind of deal. I rented this with my own money. I'm going to pay for it with my own money when I decide to buy out the rental. And overall, I'm just really impressed. It's solving all the things I needed it to do. You might be asking, well, why didn't you use the AD converter or the digital outputs for this video? I'm using just the analog connectivity direct into my systems. And the answer is I needed to add a delay to this signal before it hit my interface because it's compensating for the latency of my Sony ZV-1's camera sensor, which is about two and a half milliseconds. So I needed to align my audio with the visual before it got to the computer. So when I record this video, it's just done. I don't have to do any post-processing. I don't have to record a clap or a sync. When I record it, it's done. My 
produced audio is done and I don't have to do anything else. So what you're hearing is directly what's come into the system. I haven't done any additional plugin processing or anything. So I'm happy. Let me know what you think. And uh, until next time, see you later.